All CLS models are factory calibrated and delivered with innovative packaging that allows safe and fast installation. With Rice Lake's new cargo lift scale, simply drive up, lift, secure and power up the ready to work system. The general installation order will be covered in this video, including design and packaging, installation preparation, scale base installation, indicator installation, and calibration. CLS Design and Packaging Upon receipt of the shipping pallet, please take time to inspect it for any visible signs of damage and ensure all components are included. The shipping pallet should contain the following. One scale carriage assembly with cover plate, indicator component box, which includes the following. One electronic indicator with mounting bracket and hardware, one power cable. CLS 920i cargo lift installation manual, hardware component box, which includes the following. Two cleats with four bolts, cage clamp mounting assembly and hardware, two lithium ion batteries and two bay battery charger for wireless versions, or a coil interface cable for wired versions. CLS compatible indicators can accept data wirelessly from the two channel digital iCube junction box located on the scale carriage. Or if you choose, the wired version communicates weight data via the coil cable provided with the scale. For wireless versions, the communications electronics are protected in enclosures mounted on the back of the indicator and in the junction box. Installation Preparation Before installing the CLS on a forklift, ensure the forklift is in good operating condition. This is necessary in order to get optimal weighing accuracy. There are a few things to look for prior to installing the CLS. Inspect the forklift tines for any damage. Check the locking pin on the forks for proper function. Check the lift chains and verify that the heel of the forks has one half to one inch of clearance from the floor when the carriage is down and the mast is vertical. The slot for the centering pin should be clear of grease and debris. The top cleats of the scale rest on top of the forklift and should remain clear of grease and debris that could alter the scale's performance. Once the forklift is deemed to be in good mechanical operating condition, you'll need the following tools to remove the scale from the shipping pallet and install onto the forklift. A 3 quarter inch socket wrench, a half inch allen wrench, a 2 inch adjustable wrench, tin snips or band cutters, a torque wrench with a half inch allen bit, an electric grinder may also be useful. The scale and indicator are shipped in an upright position for ease of installation, especially if only one person is installing the scale. Clip the metal bands that are encircling the scale and component box on the back side of the pallet. Also remove the wood pieces which protect the sides of the scale. To begin, remove the wooden cover containing the indicator, loosen the bolts from the scale carriage assembly and remove the front portion of the steel pallet that the scale is sitting on. At this point the scale is now balancing on the rear portion of the steel pallet. Extreme caution must be used. Failure to do so may cause damage to the scale or injury to the installer. It is very important to verify that the shim bolts are flush with the back plate of the scale. Not doing so will place the entire scale out of alignment when attaching it to the forklift, which will make the final adjustments difficult. CLS Scale Base Installation Seal the two-channel iCube junction box if it is to be used in legal for trade applications. Make sure the tines are removed from the forklift, then move the forklift close to the pallet and scale. Carefully and slowly raise the carriage so that the top cleats of the scale hook onto the forklift carriage. Ensure that the anti-shift centering pin on the scale assembly is aligned with the center notch on the forklift carriage. Tilt the mast backward to catch the scale assembly and carefully raise the carriage to a comfortable working position. Attach the bottom cleats to the bottom of the scale assembly, so the lip of the cleat is behind the carriage. Torque the bottom cleat retaining bolts to 125 foot-pounds. Next, adjust the shim bolts for minimal clearance between the bottom cleats and the scale carriage. This clearance needs to be 2 hundredths of an inch thickness and can be measured by using a feeler gauge. 
Tighten the shim bolt jam nuts and verify the clearances. Now reattach the forklift tines to the scale assembly by attaching them to the center of the scale and sliding them off to the sides. CLS Indicator Installation Indicator location is a matter of operator preference and should be installed in a location that allows for clear vision. The 920i indicator provides four cord grips and two mil C connectors for cabling into the indicator. The cord grips come with a plug installed. This is used to prevent moisture from entering the enclosure. The indicator draws its power from the forklift battery. After the indicator is mounted, run the power cable along the forklift chassis down to the forklift battery. For wired versions of the CLS scale, special care should be taken when routing the power serial communications cable. The preferred route is through the center of the mast. Secure with cable ties to the nearest non-pinch point on the carriage and the top of the stationary non-extending portion of the mast. Carefully extend the mast slowly to all positions to confirm that the cable isn't pulling too tight and confirm there are no pinch points along the way. Check for proper cable clearance as the side shifter is moved back and forth. If using a wireless version of the CLS scale, the iCube junction box power is supplied by a lithium ion battery. The battery is located on top of the reinforced cover plate in a painted, hinged enclosure. Coil cable is not included with the wireless version. The junction box is factory wired and located between the front and back carriage plates of the scale providing protection for the junction box from debris or damage. CLS Calibration Please reference section 6.0 of the installation manual provided with all CLS models to perform recalibration and adjustments once the scale is installed on the forklift. For this installation we will show how to calibrate the CLS 920i using the front panel. Use the following steps for calibration. The forklift tines must be in place as test weights will be placed upon them. Use a level to ensure the forklift tines are level from front to back, pitch, and side to side roll prior to calibration. The test weight used to calibrate the CLS cannot be greater than 2,500 pounds. With the 920i indicator in normal weighing mode, press the more soft key, then the supervisor menu soft key. Enter a password if prompted. Using the up-down arrows, highlight the zero inclinometer menu item. Press the right arrow key. Ensure that the forklift tines are level both front to back and right to left, then press the yes soft key. Press the exit soft key and return to the normal weighing mode. Put the indicator into setup mode by pressing the indicator setup switch, which is located on the underside of the indicator. The indicator setup menu is displayed with scales highlighted. Press the down key twice to highlight grads, then press the left key once to calibrate. Press the down key once to W0, then the right key to calibrate. Press the down key three times to display the value of the test weight that will be used. Using the numeric keypad on the 920i, enter the value of the test weight you will be using and press the enter key. Press the up key once to plat 1. Press the cal match soft key. Then the up key once to highlight corner cal match. Make sure there is no weight on either fork, 0, and press the enter key. CLS system 0 point will then be calibrated. The indicator will then prompt cal match point 1. Carefully place the test weight on the left time. With the weight in place, press the enter key. The indicator will then prompt CalMatch point 2. Remove the weight from the left tine and place it on the right tine. You must use exactly the same test weight. When ready, press the Enter key. The calibration will finalize. When done, press the Save and Exit soft key. Calibration can be verified by placing the test weight on either tine. The readings must be the same. Once configuration of the user's parameters are all entered, the CLS should be ready for daily operation.